So once everything has been checked, swabs and instrument counts correct, the next thing is to close the abdomen. And here the closure starts with the closure of the rectus sheath. And since this is a midline incision, which, like we said earlier on, doesn't heal as well as a transverse incision, we are using a permanent suture, which is nylon, to do the closure of the rectus abdominis. That is a better suture for preventing wound dehiscence. So the upper angle of the rectus sheath is secured, and then the sutures are placed in the rectus sheath. And this goes all through the, the whole length of the incision. And one complication that could occur at this stage of the operation, if one is not careful, is that in placing the suture through, the surgeon could pick the bowel and then eventually resulting in a fistula between the bowel and the skin, an enterocutaneous fistula. So the surgeon needs to be careful that a needle is not placed in too deep or placed in blindly so that it ends up picking bow So now the rectus sheath has been closed completely and the final stage of the surgery would be to close the skin incision. And for this skin closure, we are using rapidly absorbed Vicryl. This Vicryl O, but this dissolves faster than the Vicryl that has been used. This is called Vicryl Rapid and the skin here is closed with a subcuticular stitch. And once the skin closure is done, the surgery is over.
So when the skin is closed and the surgery is completed, the patient then is moved to the recovery ward and in the immediate post-operative period, the patient receives IV fluids, about three liters of fluids over a 24 hour period. Usually give two liters of 5% dextrose solution and one liter of Ringer's lactate over 24 hours. There's quarter hourly monitoring of the patients blood pressure, pulse, and respiration until she's fully recovered from anesthesia. And then the urine output is observed because one of the earliest signs of damage to the ureters is significant reduction in the urinary, the urine output. So patients observe in the recovery ward, patients is given analgesics and prophylactic antibiotics. And after about two to three hours in the recovery ward, once the patient is stable, then the patient is transferred out of the operating room premises to the lying-in ward, where the post-operative ward care now begins. The main complications that could be picked in the early post-operative stage is um, hemorrhage. Where the patient goes back to recovery ward, the blood pressure begins to rise back to normal because anesthetic agents have worn off. And there, there might be bleeding from some ligatures, which were thought to have been securely placed. And this is called reactionary hemorrhage. That could be picked in the recovery ward.